fighting's exciting. Discover discussion. Swap guns for tongues. And charm for concussion. Envelop your foes in one massive kiss. And come to a Saturday night. Thank you. Most of you are too kind. <laughs> Welcome to the last Saturday Night Armistice of the present series. And I don't know if you notice anything different about this week's show. <laughs> that's right, it's presented by a three-headed man. <laughs> uh, that's because after lengthy negotiations with Peter Bainham and David Schneider, I've merged with them <laughs> to create probably the biggest television presenter in Britain. <laughs> and it's not just us. This week, Britain went takeover man. <laughs> Gobbling up building societies and privatised utilities like they were just feeble bunches of parsley. <laughs> the latest takeover bit happened in sport, where the games of golf and rugby merged to create the most popular sport in the world, rugby golf. <laughs> Meanwhile, Michael Heseltine, in charge of getting the government's message across, <laughs> did so by hanging around in television studios, disrupting the reporting of any bad news. Britain's biggest building society, the Halifax, says house prices <coughs> in the United <coughs> Kingdom are continuing to fall. And letting smoke canisters off during unwelcome graphics. <laughs> Still with the BBC, the corporation came <laughs> under fresh criticism for a perceived drop in standards of taste and, more shockingly, language. With the weather in Britain hotter than the Mediterranean right now and little wind around to shift polluting farts, the groups <laughs> claim the government is breaking the law by failing to tell people of the farts. <laughs> and finally, following the release of pictures purporting to show an autopsy on crashed aliens in 1947, Fresh footage came to light of what was claimed to be a Santa Claus who came down over the Nevada desert in 1952. The shots clearly show an aged Laplander with red markings over the hair and genitals and traces of a titanium-based foil unknown to science thought to be used for wrapping presents. Eyewitness accounts tell of a crashed sleigh-like vehicle strewn with the snapped corpses of flying elves and a 14-foot-high mound of earth later identified as deer droppings. <laughs> Shall we take our jacket off? Good idea. Good okay, idea. Uh, let's move to a vote then. Um, all those in favour of removing the jacket, yeah, uh, raise your hands. Definitely. Uh, that's unanimous then. Okay, off with the jacket. That size fizzy. Yes. Yeah, no, no, I mean, it's so hot and sweaty. I mean, my armpit started to rust. Look. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's put that uh, surprisingly arousing image to one side now <laughs> and uh, move on to a favourite one of mine. Imagine every member of the House of Commons suddenly died of a terrifying disease. <laughs> well, there's a similar atmosphere in Parliament just now because all the MPs have gone on holiday. So what exactly do our legislators get up to in the summer until November? <laughs> well, for most MPs, the summer simply means five months hanging around in shopping centres <laughs> with uh, nothing to do and uh, causing havoc outside HMV. Uh, some other MPs like to go backpacking and interrailing, uh, but that's not the Eurosceptics. <laughs> Yeah, and there have been lots of complaints from Tory MPs uh, this week about the new change of boundaries that have left many Conservatives looking for safe seats and running around Britain like dazzled warthogs. Um, so, to address the problem, uh, the government has suggested a new set of constituencies uh, to come into effect in 1996. This is how it will work. Uh, Scotland will now have one MP. <laughs> 
They will be known as the constituency for Scotland Central. <laughs> um, Wales will have one MP and will be renamed England West. <laughs> um, there will be, be two constituencies in the north of England. Uh, the first one is North North. <laughs> and then there's North South, <laughs> uh, which will include Devon and Cornwall. And uh, all of this will just leave Chelsea, which will have 625 in. <laughs> The, the great thing about it is that Norman Lamont still won't have a constituency. <laughs> yes. Now, this summer is the time when visitors flock to Britain to see the castle where Jim Callaghan fought the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> or to visit the capital's new waxwork tramp museum. <laughs> this summer, the Saturday Night Armistice decided to see what tourists are willing to pay for. For a day, we opened an exhibition at London's Trocadero Centre. Brown World. <laughs> a visual spectacle in a ten-foot square room devoted entirely to the colour brown. We charged the public four pounds for a ten-minute tour and our hidden cameras established whether we were the mad fools. <laughs> Hello, Sekai. Hello, Yokosa. Welcome to a brown and belt. Welcome to Brown World. Brown is the most exciting colour of them all. Ian Fleming, creator of James Bond. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am your tour guide, Kevin, and this is Tom, my assistant. Now, I'd like to start the tour with a very simple question, and the question is this: What is brown? You, for example, madam, your shoes are brown. You, sir, your hair is brown. So, come with me, if you will, into my world, into my brown world. I don't see how you can make an exhibition just about brands before the game. Jackson Brown, a famous American singer-songwriter who has been thrilling audiences across the world for the past 27 years. James Brown, the grandfather of soul, the funky president. Call him what you will. Underneath we have Lord George Brown, Chancellor of the Exchequer in the 1960s, and Gordon Brown, who is a senior member of the Labour Party and who, if the Labour ever get into power, will be the next Chancellor of the Exchequer. And I'm beginning to wonder if there perhaps isn't a Brown conspiracy to take over world finances. Uh, just a little joke there, but quite a coincidence. I'm sure you'll agree. By the Middle Ages, uh, Brown became a fashionable colour, although it was still very scarce. Alchemists, uh, like this gentleman here, often spent many years of their lives uh, trying to transform mundane colours into the exotic and subtle tone of brown. Was it worth four pounds? Uh, no. 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 Uh, three? I, I, yes, three pounds. Three pounds for uh, exhibition. One exhibition. Four times the size of this one. Yes. On, on brown. Interesting fact, in the cosmetic industry, brown is a very popular choice, particularly for use around the eyes, although when sold in a brown bottle, it's not that popular. Yes. I think it must be interesting to have a room for green and orange as well. Let's, just for a second, uh, imagine what the world would be like without brown. That's uh, Brown World there, and you can enjoy more of that scandal later. Uh, this week, the government announced trials for a new toll scheme on Britain's motorways so that drivers have to pay good money if they want to go to Doncaster. <laughs> but there are plans to impose tolls elsewhere, including Britain's flight paths, which will involve each plane having to stop at an inflatable toll booth balloon and hand over a pound before continuing the flight. 
And no. I don't know if you knew, but um, Bath City Council have come up with a brilliant road scheme, apparently. <laughs> so yes. they've got a new scheme designed by Evil Knievel, right? <laughs> <laughs> which is ramps on all the main roads into the city, yes. which you drive at at 130 miles an hour and go <laughs> flying over the top. <laughs> <laughs> is there a special crawler lane for HGVs on that? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, the trouble is, isn't it, that with roads, is how do you satisfy conservationists and the road lobby and Shire Tories and motorists <laughs> and badgers and thin, stinking, white, dreadlock men? <laughs> <laughs> Up trees with a dog hanging from a piece of string. <laughs> You can't, you can't do it. You no, can't you can. Oh. There is a solution. Um, it's a car that has its own portable road. <laughs> Stunning vehicle. <laughs> As it's on fully functional stretch of A road, there it goes, wrapped around it, that it takes with it everywhere it goes. <laughs> it leaves the countryside relatively unruined, and it does come with its own set of bollards and uh, small furry animals that you can run over if you want. <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> No, no, I mean, the government uh, have been announcing schemes to cope with the pollution and the mm. smog mm. this week, and they'll be saying either don't take the car or share a car. Yeah. Mm. Damon Hill and Michael Schumacher are going to share a car. Because <laughs> they're both going to the same place, so... Uh, <laughs> makes sense. Right, so, so what? Damon picks Michael up at 8, eight in the morning... Clock, yeah, gives him a lift, drives him home, around, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is terrible, because in posh restaurants now, for about £3, you can buy bottled air. Mm. A nice little blue bottle with a label saying, air with a hint of peach. <laughs> um, or for £2.50, there's a basic one, which is air without a hint of turd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, pop back to Brown World to see how the duped Germans and children <laughs> are getting on in the world's only exhibition devoted to a hue. And don't it make my brown eyes blue? And here's some examples of brown art. Here, a brown Picasso. Here, a brown Matisse, and here, a brown Mondrian. <laughs> we have an example of modern video art. Uh, this was lent to the brown world by the Tate Gallery in Liverpool and was created by the young video artist Darren Hughes. And it's called simply Brown Screen. And, of course, we do like uh, visitors of the brown world to uh, make their own brown. Maybe go for a khaki or a beige. Careful, you don't want it to turn out sepia. There you go. Have a round of applause for that man's brown. Peter, hmm? the miniaturised area. Indeed. <laughs> Alas, uh, it's our last trip this series to the miniaturised area. Oh. Oh. And hence our last chance to use the Saturday Night Armistice worldwide bank of security cameras to go sniffing. What's that miniature, Mr Tony Blair? <laughs> On balance, you feel it's highly irresponsible to prey on those in public life. <laughs> you cocky little egg. <laughs> now, who's been in the news this week? Uh, the Queen Mother. The Queen Mother? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, of course. 95th birthday. 95th birthday, birthday this week, wasn't it? Right? Yeah. Let's God call her. God bless her. I just checked. I've got a little icon on the... a little icon Whee! on the big screen. Now, now, here we are. It's yep. uh, her lovely birthday. Oh. Look at that. One going to go forever. Look at her there. She's going Who are those other ladies? The up on the balcony. <laughs> now watch what happens on the security camera. She goes inside. Yeah. They've got a little surprise worked out for her. Well, a little birthday like treat. This. She... <laughs> now just take into account how old that woman is. We'd have to watch it for <laughs> hours. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Peter. <laughs> now then, there's been a resurgence in Pope John Paul lately. <laughs> Initially, there were doubts about his health when cracks began to appear in his legs. <laughs> but to prove his critics folly idiots, <laughs> the Pope has just brought out his own pop video featuring a potpourri of scenes <laughs> from his most exciting masses and encyclicals. Uh, so we're going to see the video now, and you'll notice it's been aimed at a more youthful market than you might have expected from a pensioner who wears white socks. <laughs>
Noi apa aku riset video spiritual songs. Let's go back to Brown World, an exhibition that proves the world isn't simply black and white. <laughs> now, we have some examples of the flags of the world and what they would look like if they were brown. The Union Jack of the United Kingdom, the Stars and Stripes of America, and this is France's flag, and not Italy's, as a few people think they can. <laughs> a brown, brown world. It was really brown. It was really brown. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what's that I hear? Is it the sound of jackboots? <laughs> yes, it is. So let's have a look at the darker side of brown. For in the 1930s, a brown cloud swept across Europe. The name of the cloud? The Nazis. The Nazis dragged the name of Brown into the mud by wearing these brown shirts. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was just the beginning. Ava Brown went out with Hitler, and as history testifies, their short marriage ended in tragedy. And finally, Cedric Brown, uh, while we uh, do not in any way suggest Cedric Brown, the chief executive of British Gas, is as evil as the Nazis, his recent failed pieces have certainly been controversial. But it doesn't have to be like that as we join the living world of the Brownies. These Brownie uniforms have recently been redesigned by television's Jeff Banks from the clothes show on BBC One. You can see they were the traditional brown, but now there are this yellow. Nevertheless, the future of brown is in their hands, and I, for one, am glad that it's safe. <laughs> September, we intend to open up a new ride called Brown Mountain, which will be the fastest and newest ride in Trocadero, and that's opening on September the 15th. We can't, because there's no ride. There's no ride. The there's ride no ride. Ride. If we take people for a ride, that's probably better. This, yeah. And thank you very much uh, for joining us in this tour of Brown World. <laughs> very, very good. Yes. Very good. Well worth seeing. Why well, Southern Brown? Is it? Yes, that is a whole rainbow, a whole spectrum out there. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, in case you're wondering about the implications of taking money from members of the public, I can assure you we made about uh, two hundred and twelve pounds each. <laughs> not bad, not bad. And now it's time to have my regular romp with a cloth plaything. <laughs> Our little fabric friend, the soul of a fool trapped in the body of a tiny toy, Mr. Tony Blair! Mr. Tony Blair, <laughs> you've got enormous. <laughs> oh my God! What's that, Mr. Tony? Hang on a minute. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Tony Blair? Oh, don't shout! Don't shout! All right. <laughs> it's just a glandular problem. <laughs> oh, Mr. Tony Blair, you've become the most frightening thing that's ever been filmed. <laughs> Have you been taking something? Look, Amanda, look at this. What's that? It, it's his urine sample. <laughs> the, and, and apparently, like, the testosterone's right off the limit. <laughs> What's that? You know a song about testosterone? <laughs> Come on, you don't get out of it that lightly. 
You're in deep trouble over this, you big swollen beanbag of evil. <laughs> What's that? No, you can't sit on my desk like all the other weeks. You'll smash the glass and tear your bottom. <laughs> come on, we're going to move you. Peter, come over here. Is he safe? Is he safe? He's not going to eat you. You're not going to eat Mr Peter Bainham, are you, Mr Tony Blair? Don't listen to what he says. He's, <laughs> he's just teasing. No, I'm come sorry. On. He's looking at me and his eyes are saying toy food. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're saying tofu. <laughs> It's all right, come on. Right. Come on, you take his legs there. Right. Yeah. We'll take that. his arms. Oh, oh God, God, it's God. soaking. <laughs> oh. okay, right. Okay. I'm going to have to roll it. Yeah, let's roll it. Be careful. Roll okay. Okay. Oh. okay. And we go. Oh, don't watch your mouth. Ah. Stop it. Are you all right? No, I'm not all right. You okay? I'm not. I'm being, I'm being killed by a massive gonk. Right. <laughs> Just be professional, yeah. all what right? What do you mean by I cannot be professional under this twat? No. <laughs> no. no, this happened to Scylla, she coped, it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> I can hear him and he's very happy, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I know why as well. <laughs> Earlier this week, I decided to go out and play some hilarious practical jokes on celebrities. And uh, here's my favourite one, where I gave comedian Bob Monkhouse the fright of his life. Let's see what happens when I go up and give the laughter guzzler a surprise he'll never forget. <laughs> oh dear. That took four weeks to set up. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, well, don't you think that was funny? <laughs> right, uh, more news now. And um, this week, uh, Health Secretary Stephen Dorrell, or Dorrell, I don't know how he bloody wants it pronounced, I'm not his mother. <laughs> anyway, the Health Secretary announced a war on bureaucracy in the NHS. So we've decided to take a closer look at one overworked group of people who have to make heart-rending bureaucratic decisions in hospitals. Junior hospital managers. <laughs> Our cameras followed a group of junior hospital managers at St Gerald's and looked at how they let off steam under all the pressure of a heavy day's in-tray. Uh, in this hospital, there are about uh, 112. Uh, junior, junior hospital managers. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it's hard work, but, um, you know, we, we have a laugh, oh, you know, yeah. to cope with the stress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, I suppose our most uh, important job is working out uh, monthly expenditure oh, yes. in the hospital, but, you know, it can be fun. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, last year, <laughs> last year, just by putting all together all your expensive hip operations in uh, April, May period and September, October period, <laughs> We managed to make the overall graph of the year's expenditure look like an enormous pair of women's tits. <laughs> I mean, you put that up on the wall and people take notice. Oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, uh, the second week of April and the second week in October were nipple weeks. <laughs> what these lads are learning here will stay with them for the rest of their lives. I mean, wherever they are. For example, last year I was on a plane and there was an emergency. Um, this man arrested, had a heart attack at 30,000 feet. And I was able to come forward, assess the situation, and then explain to the cabin crew and the pilot, with the aid of some very primitive graphs and pie charts, <laughs> that there really weren't enough resources on the plane to help him, and that really he should be moved somewhere else. Um, to you, it's very important, this project. It's a breast cancer screening project, which we've been running since the beginning of January. Um, we've been screening the breast so far of women... <laughs> between the ages of 45 and 50, because they're at the highest risk at the moment of, of breast cancer. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Have I said sorry. something funny? <laughs> yeah, you, you keep saying the word breast. <laughs> of course I keep saying the word breast. Is there any chance that you can control yourselves, do you think? <clears throat> yes, we, we intend to screen the breasts of women... <laughs> the breasts of... <laughs> My particular system, uh, if I've got to close down wards, is to do it in such a way that from the outside of the building, at night, the, uh, the closed wards spell the word arse. <laughs> to 
goes down the canteen, did not I? <laughs> what about the wait, what about, what about that time the, um, the hospital down the road asked us for uh, scanners? So what we did, right, was <laughs> we sent them this huge, massive box, right, and inside was a single copy of the film Scanners. <laughs> I mean, when you're not working long hours, I mean, it's 8 in the morning to 6, 6.30, 7, 7.30 sometimes, yeah. it can yeah. lead to mistakes, you're, you're yeah. tired. Um, yeah. I mean, I made a mistake. Um, I actually started um, managing a building which wasn't actually part of the hospital. Uh, <laughs> there was a news agents just next to it. Uh, I uh, incinerated uh, all the stock. Uh, and the guy apparently wasn't uh, insured, and uh, he went bankrupt. Uh. <laughs> Was I insured? Now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He has uh, has all the papers delivered every morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's time to hunt the old woman. <laughs> this is the piece of television that's breathed new life into the aged. We release an old woman in front of other people's TV cameras, and you have to spot her. At stake is our first prize, the Saturday Night Armistice hors d'oeuvre tree. <laughs> and uh, this week's hors d'oeuvres are Parma ham and pimentos. <laughs> uh, on now to this week's sighting, and uh, to end the series, it's possibly been the most difficult one yet. Only one person spotted her. Here he is, David Williams! <laughs> First of all, David, where are you from? I'm from Cardiff. From Cardiff, OK. And I believe it was a rather Welsh-related programme that yes, you appeared in. Yes, it was Public Home, Welsh language soap opera. Welsh language soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can spot her, then. Let's have a look. I'm going to go to Yeah. No. My name is Sayenda Barrington. <laughs> right. Well, is it clear when it comes up? I can't see the screen, actually. Right, we'll enjoy the rest of the Oh, there she goes. Excuse again. Okay, that's too bad. Thank you. Oh, she speaks! <laughs> she speaks! She speaks! Well done! There we are. So, uh, did you win the uh, hors d'oeuvre tree, right? That's yours to take. You can take your pimentos back to Cardiff with you. <laughs> They're safe. Or... <laughs> or you can gamble on tonight's special prize. So what's it going to be? I'll gamble. Yes! <laughs> You're a brave man, and because for the big prize, you have ten seconds to find the old woman who's in the audience tonight, <laughs> all right? Now, turn around, turn away. <laughs> can I, can I there, OK? <laughs> That's right there. And, uh, David, you now have ten seconds to hunt the old woman! <laughs> A weekend trip with Jean to Parma to visit the hounds. <laughs> and David, it's better than that. It's not just the hams you get there. You get all sorts of hors d'oeuvres. There's prosciutto, mortadella. <laughs> it's an hors d'oeuvre wonderland. <laughs> what do you think of that? Great. Right, OK. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please, a big, big send-off for David and the old woman. <laughs> We've got a chauffeur-driven <laughs> Morris Minor outside the studio. It's just a two-door uh, car, so they've got to get in the back. That's going to whisk them off. Unfortunately, the chauffeur has to get out at Felix Stoll, but then Jean, the old woman, will drive from then on. Uh, we will... I want to make it clear, we're not going to let David drive the car. <laughs> All right? So, cheerio! <laughs> OK, it is the end of the show, uh, the end of the series, uh, so we thought we'd go out with a bang. Or rather, a tribute to a bang. Uh, there's been a lot of arguments over how exactly we should celebrate VJ Day, perhaps with a series of sombre and reflective ceremonies, 
or as we've decided, a big disco and finger buffet. <laughs> we've got Twiglets and Pringles, uh, so come on down for a drink. Uh, the entertainment will be provided by Dave John B's Disco and Dancers. <laughs> and, uh, appropriately enough, there's a karaoke. <laughs> it's fully programmed with all your favourites. Oh, I will survive. You can't do this. Boom bang a bang. Oh, no. Flash dance. No, no. Sunrise by Rolf Harris. Stop, 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 turn it off. Turn it off. Stop. Look, you cannot do this. I mean, it's tasteless. What have you got a request? <laughs> no. I no. To, what? Um, uh, Flash bang wallop. What a picture. <laughs> No, 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 Peter, shut up. It's just, it's tasteless. We're not going to, it's repugnant. We no, 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 we're being ironic. We're being ironically repugnant. It's all right. No, you can't do it. It's offensive. No, no, I mean, we've got dips. It's just a bit of fun. No, you can't laugh at just any old thing. Where are you going? Listen to me. We can't laugh at any old thing. We have to, I don't know, we have to set, set the tone for other... <laughs> what are you doing? I've just lowered a massive weight above your head. <laughs> I'm going to drop it if you don't shut up. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, this argument has gone on long enough, and now I just thought it was time to bring it to an end. But, but you'll, you'll kill me. Well, I'm not saying I'm going to drop it. I'm just saying I might, if you don't shut up. <laughs> Stop this. Why? Stop this nonsense. Why? Because, I mean, firstly, you're being unfair to David, right, which is a violent and horrible and brutal way to settle an argument. Uh, yes. Uh. And secondly... <laughs> my God, what's that? That is my own massive weight. Now, if you continue to threaten David, I will use this to remove one of your dimensions, right? <laughs> that dimension known as height. Hold it, hold it. Three, two, one, go! Oh, my God. Yes, fantastic. What, what is that? Uh, yeah, well, oh, I've now developed my own weight and uh, I've just tested it successfully on the miniaturised area. Um, fantastic. What, what's that in your hand? This, uh, this is a remote control. See, technology has moved on in the last couple of minutes and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I now no longer need to hold a rope for my weight. Thanks. Um, it's, what, what are you I doing? Just... Lovely. You'll, you'll notice it's also a smart weight. It's got its own camera um, so oh, it yeah. can... <laughs> Yeah, that's very fresh. I'm going to upgrade to one of those when I've got the chance. Yeah, well, anyway, we're all even now. There we go. Wait a minute, David. Mm. You destroyed my miniature area. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm sorry. It was, a, it was a test, you know. It was an unpopulated area of the set, you know. It was my miniature area! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't unpopulated. Why? Look, you flattened miniature Mr Tony Blair. Oh. Oh. What's that big Mr Tony Blair? <laughs> Right, um, There's going to be trouble. No. It, oh, it, David, you have opened a massive can of furry worms. Um, <laughs> it's just collateral damage. Don't worry, David. It's all right. It's absolutely fine. Huh? Absolutely fine. Is it? Yes, he won't hit you because I have on my person the ultimate weapon huh? that a fabric maniac is absolutely and utterly terrified of. <laughs> the common moth. <laughs> so so what, what do we do now? Well, um, I think we can live with this. Uh -huh. um, the situation has changed uh, since the start of the show, but overall, I think it's generally a lot safer, actually. But we can't move. No, that is one drawback, yes, I admit. But at least we know where we stand, literally. <laughs> so, um, let's start the party. <laughs> so, uh, any of you in the audience who are free to move, uh, please come down and join us. Uh, we've got nibbles and uh, music. As I say, we've got all your favourites. We've got Flash by right. Queen. Uh, don't make my blonde right. eyes blue. Uh, and the theme from Thunderball. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to be here well into the night and possibly for at least a few more years. So until we see you again, good night. And remember, in life, always feel your emotions. Goodbye.